Hey guys, Scott from Trump Studios, and this is going to be a bit of a talking head video. I mean, you don't need to watch the video, you can just minimize it and listen to it. I got a couple of things I'd really like to say here that I think is important. Uh, I'm making this video because uh, some things that have happened recently. Really, when it gets to the topic of, you know, getting good, quote unquote, at mixing, when that question is asked, usually it's some kind of technical answer like, oh, you know, you need to have monitors, you need to get your room acoustics, and so on and so on. I mean, all important, of course, but I think we're, I think that's ignoring a very big aspect of audio production that many people don't talk about. There are some serious things that you need to be aware of um, if you do not go into this process of audio production knowing them that can really hinder your progress. These are somewhat inconvenient truths, and I'm sure some of you listening to this will unsub me or leave some kind of witty comment. Go ahead, that's fine. But these are my opinion, of course, and these are three crucial things to know as you delve into the world of audio production. Number one, learning never stops. The sooner you understand and accept that you'll never know everything and come to peace with that, this the more this infinite process of learning will become fun and interesting instead of painful and frustrating the moment you start thinking that you've got it figured out or everything is going to be great if i can just have the same plugins and the gear as my favorite mixer is the moment you've lost the entire point of audio production you're just going to waste a lot of time and money if you approach audio in this way the truth of the matter is that there is no finish line there is no bottom to this well guys the journey of audio production is never ending and if you're the kind of person that needs to have some finite goal or like stick in the sand to understand that you know that you're succeeding or that you, you figure something out audio production may not be what you want to get into uh, because audio production is a creative process there's many different solutions to many different problems <laughs> and most frustratingly you know there's no definitive way to do anything in audio i mean granted there are rules of thumb okay and generally accepted guidelines you know, for how things need to sound to be a good mix and so on. I mean, these are just elementary guidelines that you can write on a piece of paper. I could give it to you and you can be like, oh, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But the work is going to be understanding what I bring on that piece of paper and you understanding when you hear it in a mix, like, yes, I have good balance now. Yes, the low end, we're good to go here. That's what's going to take years to develop. If you can understand from the start that you will never truly get it, like fully like, I got it, I know everything and your journey in audio production is going to be way more enjoyable. Second is you need to invest in yourself. And this is what I'm talking about with the incident that happened that kind of spurred this entire video. I made a video about this, I think it was a couple months ago around the new year, if I remember correctly, you know, where um, you shouldn't be downloading plugins. It doesn't help you at all. And not two days from recording this video that you're watching right now, I got a message on Facebook from a person. He asked me some questions about amp simulators, which is fine, you know. I answered, gave my advice, moved on, started doing other things. Later on in the day, the same guy messages me with a link to a website and he says, thank me later. I have never seen the name of this website before, so I Google it because I don't click on links and come to find out it is an audio VST torrent website. And then he messages me and says, I just cleaned out their entire guitar amp simulator section. I don't know why. People think that just because they can download something illegally that they're suddenly going to get great results. That is so fucking stupid. Not only is it not going to help this idiot who downloaded all these plugins because he doesn't know how to use them because that's what we talked about. Didn't even know what genres to grab. Didn't even, didn't even know that he could get any of the plugins he talked about for like two weeks to try it out to see which one he liked. Nope, just goes ahead and downloads everything because he's stupid. And it's even more stupid that when you don't even know how to use the plugin, but you download it anyway. I do not get it. If you're not willing to invest in this, this is then then you're not serious, okay? The reason I say this is because you, you, okay, you yourself as the person with the brain, with the ears, you are the investment. Your skills and your ability are what needs to grow, not the fucking plugin collection, not your gear collection. That stuff does not help you especially when you don't know how to use it. I don't know why this is so hard to understand. In any other application, it's obvious, right? If you want to get stronger, you need to lift heavy weight. Simple. You just cannot walk into a gym, get under a bar, and squat 130 kilo if you've never done it before. Obviously, if you have freak genetics, which makes you like less than 0.01% of the population, you're going to have to work up slowly and ramp up to that weight. The same goes for sprinting or any other number of sports. 
hard work needs to go before in the back end before you can get a desired result in the front end. Why does this guy think it's any different? Because he can just download them illegally. Okay, of course, I know the I know the knee jerk reaction already. Oh my gosh, guy, it must be nice. But you can't have money. <laughs> yeah, my response is get fucked. Okay, you don't know what I've been through in the last 20 years of my life to get where I am today or the struggles and the setbacks I've dealt with. Do you honestly think I woke up one day with everything I use? That's asinine. Is it not reasonable to assume that after 20 years of doing this that I have been able to buy things along the way? Use your fucking brain, okay? The kind of reaction that that is, is a person who's too jealous to take responsibility for their own situation, okay? The real question is this. What are you spending your money on right now that you don't need? Do you have a Netflix subscription? Why? Netflix is trash. Are you buying a new iPhone every year? That's stupid. Do you buy new clothes and new shoes multiple times a year? What for? Do you need to have a brand new car? Why? These are all things that are directly impacting how much you can invest in your audio career. If audio is really what you want to do, it has to be number one on your list. You have to be willing to make sacrifices, save money and invest in yourself and take your goals and passions very seriously. Because the moment you start doing that, you will attract people who are the same. You will attract like-minded people who are also taking their goals very seriously and who are also investing in themselves and who also put skin in the game. Because if you take a guy who buys a plugin for $100 and he's using that as like, okay, I have a decision to buy some food or I really need to get this plugin because I really want to get a better result. And he foregoes eating for a day to buy that plugin. I guarantee you that guy is gonna have a better result than this fuck nut over here who downloaded all the amps for free. Why? Because he has skin in the game. He has invested something. He has put something in in order to get something out. You cannot do it any other way. Another reason why that comment or that reaction pisses me off is because I fully understand what it's like to live with no money. I know what it's like to go, hey, do I pay the water bill or do I pay the electric bill? Hey, you know what? I've been evicted out of my apartment before. You know what? I've slept in my car in the parking lot of Toys R Us in South Bend, Indiana. I've been there. I've done that. But at the forefront of my mind, it was always, how can I get out of this? What can I do to put myself in a position so I can get back to making music again? Okay, some of those problems that I ran into, yeah, they were created. I make bad decisions. I was young and dumb. Fully admit that. Part of growing up, part of life. But I never sat there and went, eh, it must be nice. <laughs> And as much as you may hate to hear this, if you're truly serious about wanting to do this and create great mixes and everything else like that, you must invest in yourself. And it must be a priority over everything else. And you must be willing and ready to do it for a long time. Okay? Listen, I get it. Life happens. I just told you that I made some poor decisions when I was young. So I had to make a lot of sacrifices and my growth was definitely delayed due to these issues and things that I had to solve, okay? Sometimes things happen in the world beyond our control, and we must do things that put our dreams on the back burner. I get it. I'm also not oblivious to what has happened in the world the last year and a half. Listen, I'm not stupid, okay? But it does not excuse anybody from working towards their goals and dreams. Making sacrifices is hard, okay? And I understand the peer pressure to have the latest and greatest iPhone and clothes and blah, 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 but fuck those people. Grab your balls, have a spine, stand up straight, put your shoulders back, go, nope, I'm not doing that. These are my goals, this is what I'm focused on. And if you got friends that don't support you, fuck them, get them the fuck out of your life. They don't deserve to be around you. You need to be around people that support you and want to see you succeed. If that means getting into an online audio community so you can share and talk with people who are in the same boat as you are, as I do with my Discord, for example, then that's what you do. Don't waste your time with little fuckers over there who all they want to do is try and take you away from your dream, okay? Stand up tall, grab your balls, move forward, invest in yourself. That moves on to my third point. Don't give up, all right? I recorded my very first songs in 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. It was on just a shitty uh, Windows Millennium 2000, uh, Windows 2000 ME edition with a Casio 88 key workstation it was with a Marshall ABT-50 valve state combo amp 
and I was using a Gateway 2000 desktop microphone. I literally would just put the microphone in front of the of the amp, and that's how I recorded my guitars at the time. Okay, obviously the, the, the results weren't great. And I have an MP3 right now. I'm gonna show this MP3 to you right now. I recorded this with my guitar at the time with the ABT50 that I'm talking about with this Gateway 2000 microphone. This MP3 is 17 years old. All right, let's have a listen. Okay, clearly the song is not bad, right? The ideas are fine, you know? But it's 2003. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't have the skills to get it sounding how I wanted it in my head. That, that, that wouldn't be the case for like another 10, 10, 13 years, okay? But when I started, you know, digital recording was way, way in its infancy. You know, amp simulators, what were that? What was that? Uh, drum software libraries, what? No, D drum kit from hell from TuneTrack was still a few years away. Okay, but I, but I kept at it. No matter where I was living, what I was doing, where I moved to, what was happening in my life, music was all I wanted to do. And I spent every waking moment trying to put myself in a situation where I could spend more time recording, more time mixing, more time experimenting, more time working on my craft, okay? Stuff like Tarto Mastering, all these other online training resources, that didn't exist. YouTube didn't exist. You know, if I wanted to learn how to be a better mixer back then, I had to go to a huge city and hope to God I get an internship at a studio, which I didn't have money for, didn't have resources back then, okay? You know, on multiple occasions in my life, I would even, <laughs> I even called in sick. I'm like, I'm not sick, I've just been up all night and I want to keep working on my music, okay? That's how important music is in my life. I've been there, you know, do I pay my electric bill? Do I pay my water bill? I'm tired of eating uh, chicken flavor ramen. I guess I'm gonna eat beef uh, flavor ramen this week with water. That's not a joke. I did that. I've been there. So I don't wanna hear any of that. It must be nice, Scott. You can literally get fucked. That's offensive. You understand? Now, had I been smarter <laughs> with my decisions when I was younger, yeah, my learning probably could have been less painful, okay? But it's those hard years, those bad decisions that I made and finding a way out of it, I do not take that for granted because that's why I'm able to be where I am right now. Because what I do have right now, I do not take for granted and I work very hard to keep what I have. So, and listen, I'm not trying to say I'm better than you. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that I deserve something that you don't. I don't. I'm simply letting you know that I've had very hard times in my life with no money, no place to sleep, sleeping in my car, working multiple jobs, being in bad situations, but I didn't give up. I failed repeatedly, okay? You can even hear it on my YouTube channel, some of the early mixes that I posted. Those mixes aren't very good, okay? I mean, you can even see how I'm trying to work through the guitar tone mastery thing back then. It's not very good, but I didn't quit, okay? I didn't quit. Now, one thing that, last point I'll make about this, the one thing that really pisses me off about that, oh my gosh, God, it might be nice. You know, many times you're gonna hear, like the media, this happens a lot, right? Some band becomes really popular and like, overnight sensation, oh my God. And that's just fucking offensive because that band probably has been just slaving away in clubs or small tours or self book tours or whatever they have to do now for years before they got anything. And then the balls for that media to be like, oh, overnight sensation, that is just offensive. The point I'm trying to make is that all the work that you do that is not under the spotlight, all the nights that you spend alone in front of your DAW, trying it again, failing, trying it again, working through the frustration, 
that is what gets you where you need to be. So when I do these live streams and I'm answering questions and I'm showing you guys what I'm doing, I'm not just sitting here going, hey, look at me. Uh, uh. There are thousands of hours that are not on a live stream, that are not on my YouTube channel, that I don't talk about, where I am staying up till five or six in the morning and then going to work at eight o'clock in the morning for a full day and then doing it all over again so that I can get better at what I'm doing. Don't give up. Don't quit. Stand up and fucking do it. Let me tell you, I know the technical struggles, okay, of mixing, but no one talks about those internal struggles, right? Of dealing with failure, frustration, depression, anger, and the constant negative question, you know, questions like, fuck man, should I, should I just quit? You know, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. And why do I do this? I said, it's fucking four o'clock in the morning again. God, my fix is fucking awful. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I did everything that they showed in the tutorial. I don't understand. My mix isn't fucking working. The guitars, my fucking lowing is terrible. Oh my God, it's five o'clock in the morning. I need to get ready for work. Why do I do this to myself? Maybe I should just fucking quit. Maybe my parents were right. Maybe my friends were right. Maybe I just need to go to college to get a, get a programming degree. What? Is this just a, should I just quit? When am I ever going to be good enough? Been there. Been done that. And let me tell you something else. Those questions never go away. They, they don't, they aren't as strong, they aren't as uh, invasive as they are in the beginning, but they never go away because audio has no finish line. You're, you can always get better, you can always improve. There's always a way that something could be better. Maybe once or twice in my lifetime, am I gonna have a result or a mix where I'm gonna go, <laughs> it's perfect, literally perfect, nothing else has to happen here. But I don't count on it, okay? You can't have an ego. You have to push forward and you can't give up ever. You know what? An ego. Speaking of ego, let's make this the fourth point. I know there was only supposed to be three, but here's the fourth point. You can't have an ego. The size of your ego and inability to take any kind of criticism is directly proportional to how long it's going to take you to get better audio production. If your ego is so fucking big that you can't even admit that someone's better than you, or you can't allow someone better than you to give you a critique on what you could do better or how you could improve, you're in for a fucking long, long hard road. If your ego doesn't let you post music because you're afraid of what people might say, you're never gonna improve. Putting yourself out there and having your songs and your mixes heard is a requirement to getting better. Full stop, period, end of argument. Ego is your enemy because it's gonna stop you from growing and it will not allow you to put yourself in places where you could potentially be vulnerable, where you have to say, I don't know, or you have to go, yes, you're right, my mix is pretty poor. Yes, you're right, my mix balance could be better. Yes, you're right, my low end is a bit shaky, it doesn't make sense. Because your ego is gonna stop you from taking responsibility for what you really need to do to get better at audio production. And listen, as a creative myself, I totally get it. All right, the last thing I want to do sometimes is put a song that I've worked a long time on out on the internet for someone to take two seconds to go, it's shit. Well, fuck that guy, okay? Fuck him. After years of doing YouTube and working with clients and sending my mixes, you know, to mix mentors and paying for one-on-ones <laughs> and being told that things are not good, all right, I've gotten better and I've come to peace with that that's part of the process and sometimes you just need to do that, okay? It's still hard. I mean, I'm human, okay? <laughs> I, I would be lying to you if I say that my ego never gets in the way. It does sometimes, but as a human and just as a person through this auto production journey, I, you know, it's still something to overcome. Okay. So what really would be my final take here? What's the actual advice? Okay. My actual advice is not don't download plug on blah, blah, blah. I don't care what you do, but here's my actual true advice. If you really love audio and music and your goal is to record music, mixed music and be somehow some way involved in the audio sphere then fucking do it take yourself seriously invest in yourself put your money where your mouth is don't make excuses don't let anyone or anything stop you find a way figure it the fuck out nobody's gonna do it for you and frankly nobody can push you across that imaginary finish line because a it doesn't exist and b even if it did you wouldn't learn anything you must put in the work you must be willing to stand up and put all the responsibility for your success on your shoulders and you have to take your own journey and path in life and audio production. The great thing is that in the digital age, you have a leg up on guys like myself who started 20, 25 years ago and stuff like that. The digital age is quite nice. There are a lot of 
high quality, great successful mixers who are putting tutorial courses and training courses together for you to purchase and learn from. I would have killed to have guys like Jens Bogren or stuff like that putting out stuff on Nail the Mix when I first started. Would have been great. Would have cut off many years of learning, okay? But you need to understand that you can take advantage of that. It's an investment in yourself, in your ear, in your mind, in your creativity. It's an investment, okay? So how much do you want it? What are you willing to do? What is it worth to you? What are you willing to sacrifice to make your dream a reality? And are you willing to do it for however long it takes? If so, then fucking do it.